Do you feel like you're doing all the right things? You're eating healthy, getting in your protein, doing your workouts, and yet, for whatever reason, you just can't seem to get the fit, lean tone body you really want to have. Well, if that's the case, you're most likely making one, if not two, of these very big mistakes that I see all the time that I'm gonna break down in today's video and explain to you what to do to fix it so you can finally start getting the dream results that you're working so hard for. What's going on, Fit Fam? Welcome on back to my channel. My name is Megan Janice, the founder of Nomadic Fitness, and I teach you ladies how to eat way more food without any restrictions and work out smarter instead of harder so you can build that toned, sexy hourglass body that you feel amazing in and maintain it year round for life with ease. So if you're new to the channel, make sure to hit that like and subscribe. Come follow me over on Instagram for even more fitness content. And if you're coming on back, thanks so much for joining for another video. Okay, FitFam, first things first, quickly, you may notice that I am in yet again a new apartment. I moved to Cape Town, South Africa about a week and a half ago and I am absolutely loving it. I came first just for a one month adventure. I'd always wanted to come here. I've always heard amazing things. And let me tell you, I have been absolutely mind blown. I think it actually may be the most beautiful place I've ever been. And I'm pretty sure I'm gonna end up staying one more month because I like it so much. So stay tuned, I'll be sharing more of that. All right, but let's get into the topic of today's video. So what are the two really big mistakes that I see happen all of the time? The first group is that you are just eating healthy, but you're not actually tracking macros. You're not actually trying to adhere to any specific target with your nutrition. So you're just kind of eating well. Maybe you are aiming for a protein target, but you're not hitting consistent macros and with that consistent calories. The reason this is such a problem is because if you're only aiming for protein or if you're just trying to eat clean in general, the amount of food you're eating can still be all over the place. So one day you could be eating 1700 calories the next day could be 2,200, the next day could be 1,500. It could just be such a huge variety. And so we know that all you're trying to do to build this lean fit body is simply build more muscle and have less body fat. And in order to for sure know that you are doing those things, you have to know that you are eating the right amount of food that is going to guarantee that you're either in the surplus for muscle gain or in the deficit for fat loss. So if you're just eating healthy or if you're just adhering to a protein target, but then your calories are all over the place, how do we know that the amount of food is right for you? We have no data to work with to know how your body responds to X amount of food. So I'm gonna explain that that's actually what you need to do in a second. Now the second group, and this is where I find a lot of people, including myself for many, many years in the past, is you do know you're supposed to have set macros, thank goodness, okay, so you're one step ahead, you have your set macros, you have your set workouts, but now the big problem is you get one set of macros and you never change it. I was just talking with somebody in my DMs the other day who said she's been trying to cut for one year and that her calories are at 1500 and she literally hasn't changed it for one year and she still feels like she hasn't seen the fat loss that she wants. So whether you don't have any specific macros at all or if you have just one set of macro targets and you never change it, either one of these is a very, very bad situation because it just means that you don't have any actual data to be analyzing because remember, getting that fit a body that you dream of that is having more muscle, less fat, is nothing more than simply working with a strategy that is guaranteed to get you there. And how do you know that the strategy is guaranteed to get you there? Because you are actually evaluating the data. You are keeping track of what you're doing and then you're knowing if what you're doing is working or if it's not, and if it's not, then you'll know that you need to change it and you'll also know by how much and by what to change it. So I'm gonna give many client examples of this in today's video and explain the different phases and why we did what we did so you can see what I'm talking about. Now, I just wanna say that you know maybe you're hearing this and thinking, oh, but I follow X fitness influencer and she says she doesn't track macros or I follow this girl and she says she only tracks her protein. I just wanna say that those people that you follow already have the bang and fit physique that you wanna have. It's very, very different to be maintaining a very fit physique than it is to get to one in the first place. And I also wanna say that a lot of these fitness influencers you see who say that they don't track or only track protein have very good genetics. That is also why they are able to get those results without really having to dial things in. Now, obviously they work hard, they train really consistently, really hard in the gym, so yes, 
Once you get to where you want to be, very different story. But we're talking about you right now and the fact that you don't have the results you want. And if you felt like I have these results that I like and I didn't do it tracking macros, then by all means, keep doing your thing, boo. But if you feel frustrated that you are nowhere even close to where you want to be, then I am telling you how to get to where you want to be. And that is going to be actually analyzing data and fully tracking your macros. And besides that, this is also just the way that is going to be as fast as possible and as guaranteed as possible. Cause there's literally no room for error. There's no room for guessing and hoping. You just know if you're doing the right thing or not. Okay. So what are the things you should be paying attention? attention to? What is the data you need to be controlling and monitoring to get the fitness results that you want? Number one, it is having set macros, a certain amount of protein, carbs, and fats that you aim for consistently. And then every week you should be evaluating if you, number one, actually consistently hit those macros. And then number two, if they're working for you the way that they should for the goals you're trying to work on right now. And if they weren't, then this is one of the things that definitely could be changed. So when it comes to hitting your macros, this means you have a certain amount of protein, fats, and carbs. And that means you want to be hitting each of those macros within five grams plus or minus. So if your protein target is 140 grams, you're eating no more than 145 grams and no less than 135. I just want to say there's a very big difference between tracking macros, meaning you just track your food and whatever you eat is whatever versus hitting your macros. There's a lot of people I talk to who say that they track macros, but then, you know, they're 20 grams over on fat one day and they're 40 grams under on protein the next day. That is not hitting your macros. You need to be consistent eating a certain amount because again, if you can't see the data of what's happening with your body, if you can't see what's happening with your weight, what's happening with your body composition and photos, when you consistently eat a certain way, how are you going to know if you need to change it, right? It's the exact same thing as if you're running a business, you're trying to make money. Let's say you launched some ads and you're putting money into ads and you wanted to know, are these ads actually working? Would you just say like, well, I don't know, hopefully it is. I don't really know for sure if it is or not. Like I have no numbers to actually work with, right? You wouldn't do that. You would go actually look at the numbers, how much money is spent, look at the ad metrics, and then evaluating that data, you will know if this ad is working for you or not, or if you should put more or less money into it. So it's the same thing when it comes to your physique. And I know all this maybe sounds really technical, but the fun part of this is that this actually helps you become way more objective and way more just in control of the results you're getting, because I'm telling you, you are in control. You just need to make sure that you're actually adhering to things and evaluating the data from there. So when it comes to hitting your macros within five grams plus or minus, this should be five or six days per week. So this means you do get to have a little bit of wiggle room to still go and live your life. If you're somebody who feels like you don't ever need a cheat meal, then I mean, sure, you can hit your macros all seven days, but obviously I think for this to be sustainable, enjoyable, and realistic, you do need to feel like there's one or two days per week where you can go out, have some fun with your friends, eat whatever you want and not worry about it. Now, obviously you don't want to go crazy and be like binge eating, but it does mean that you can go to a restaurant, get what you want, enjoy it and move on with your life. So you still have your one or two free meals per week. And then outside of that, you are adhering to your macros. All right. The other parts of the data that you are controlling, that you are monitoring is obviously your workouts. So let's say you have four lifts per week to lowers to upper bodies. You want to make sure that you're consistent with that, right? You don't want to be going to the gym five days, one week, and then the next week only going one day. Cause again, that's going to really mess with the data. How do we know if it's working for you or not? If the data is not consistent. And then similarly, this is also going to be how consistent you are with cardio and your steps. So if there's a huge range week to week, you know, if one week you were getting like 15,000 steps a day and then the next week you're getting 2000, then that's a huge range of data that could definitely mess with things. Okay. So those are the variables that you're controlling. Now, in terms of how you're evaluating to know if this is working for you or not, what you're tracking is your body weight. So you need to be tracking your weight every single day, first thing in the morning. So after using the bathroom naked and before eating or drinking anything, weigh yourself and actually keep track of it in a graph. Don't just write it down somewhere because what you want to pay attention to is the trend of the data. 
So is your weight trending to be about the same? Is it trending upwards? Is it trending downwards? Because that is going to give you a lot of information as far as how your body is responding to these consistent variables that you have with your food and with your movement. Then what you also need to be doing is taking weekly progress photos. I cannot tell you how many people I talk to who are making the mistake of not taking photos. And I get it. You're like, oh, but I'm uncomfortable and I feel so ashamed. I don't want to see my body. Girl, nobody has to see it except for you. And trust me, there might be a lot of the time that you actually are making good progress, but you don't notice it because day to day it's so gradual. And here's the other thing. Everybody thinks that they should always be losing weight, but just because you're not losing weight on the scale doesn't mean that your body composition isn't improving. So this is why you really need to be looking at photos every week, comparing them side by side relative to know how to actually read the data that you have and whether or not it's working. Okay. So let me illustrate this with some client examples for you. Now, before I share those, I want to also share that there are three phases that you can be in at any given time. A lot of people are not in any of these phases, or if they are the only one they think about is cutting. And that is also why they never get to the dream physique that they want. And they can never maintain it with ease because yes, your dream physique is one that has less body fat, but don't forget that it's also a more muscular body. So if you are always stuck at very low calories, you're never really changing it. You're never getting out of this cutting low calorie eating phase. You're never really going to be able to build any serious muscle. And without the muscle, you're not going to get that toned look. And you're also not going to get the fast metabolism to be able to maintain that toned look with ease. So the three phases you can be in are called a reverse or a reverse diet. And this is where you gradually and intentionally eat a little bit more bit by bit so that your body's maintenance level will increase. You will be burning more calories calories at a higher intake. And this is ultimately going to set you up to have a easier fat loss phase, a cut, afterwards because your body is going to be burning so many more calories than it was before. So you're going to have way more room to drop your calories and just have a more efficient cut. So you're going to see a lot of examples of this in a second and how powerful it is. So that's the second phase is to be in a cut and a fat loss phase. And that is where you actually do go into a calorie deficit. You are eating a little bit less than your body's burning. You're also doing a little bit more cardio and a little bit higher steps, all the things to help increase the deficit to lose more fat. But again, you need to be strategic about when and how you you cut. You don't just say, Oh, I want to lose fat. So let me drop my calories super low. This is a big mistake. And you're going to see why with all these client examples in just a moment. And the last phase is to do a build. This is traditionally called a bulk in the bodybuilding world, which I know sounds like a scary term, but really all it means is that you are eating in a slight calorie surplus so that you're going to be able to actually build some muscle because the only way to really build a lot of muscle to make a big difference in your physique is to be eating more than you're burning. So you need to go through through all of these phases in order to really build your dream physique and be able to maintain it. Okay. So I'm going to show you this one client example here in between these photos, this client lost 10 pounds. As you can see, it looks like she definitely lost a lot more than that. And that is because she lost 10 pounds on the scale, but at the same time she was gaining weight from water weight, gut weight, and glycogen. So all of that comes when you eat more food in general and especially more carbs, and then also building some more muscle. So those things were contributing to her gaining weight on the scale, but she was also simultaneously losing weight from fat. And that's why there's only quote unquote 10 pounds here, but it actually looks like more. So again, this is why it's not just about how much you weigh, what you really care about is your body composition. So she lost these 10 pounds by eating a thousand calories more. So this is an example of a reverse diet client. When she came to me, obviously she was overweight. She obviously wanted to lose fat, but we found that she was only averaging about 1500 calories a day. So obviously what most people would do, and this would be the big mistake is they would think I'm overweight. I want to lose fat. Okay. So that means I need to do a calorie deficit. All right. Well, it doesn't matter that I'm only eating 1500 calories. Let's just go to 1200 and then we'll go to a thousand and then we'll go below a thousand. That's way too little food. You are not going to be able to adhere. You're not going to be able to build any muscle. Your hormones are going to get pissed off. It is just not a good thing to do. And why not at least see what your body will do by increasing your food first? Because a lot of the time you'll be so pleasantly surprised when you see that your body adapts to the higher calories and you start leaning out anyways. So that's what happened with her as we gradually kept bringing her up and up in food. And we did this for about four months and we went all the way up to 2550 calories. So literally a thousand calories more. And in that time she decreased 10 pounds on the scale. So she lost weight, lost body fat, 
simply by eating more. Now, this won't necessarily happen to everyone, and this is all the more reason why you have to track the data of what you're doing and see how does your body respond. Generally speaking, the goal of a reverse diet, if you have a solid amount of body fat to lose, is that you wouldn't want to be seeing that you're gaining weight in the reverse. Maybe, you know, just a few pounds, like I'd say maximum five pounds, but if you have body fat to lose and as you're increasing, you're gaining weight, and you're not seeing better body composition. If you're seeing better body composition, that's a different story, meaning you're getting leaner, but you're gaining weight, then that's okay because we know that the weight gain isn't fat gain because obviously you're leaning out. But generally speaking, with a reverse, you wanna see minimal amount of weight gain, assuming that you have a lot of fat to lose. If you're more skinny and you're seeing weight gain, that's different because in this case, it just means that you're getting more muscular, which is actually what you want. You wanna look more toned, more defined. Now, let me show you an example of a different client who also went through a reverse and she actually gained weight, but she looks way leaner. So this is my client Meropi, and you can see that she went from definitely having more a soft, skinny fat kind of look to being way more lean, way more toned and defined. And in this case, we only did a reverse diet and started to lift weights. She had never lifted weights before, so that was obviously a big difference as well for her. And we went from 1,600 calories a day up to 2,300 calories a day. And if you can believe it, she gained 15 pounds on the right. That is because she was also just very tiny even though she technically had a high amount of body fat, she was petite, she didn't actually weigh that much. She literally only weighed 113 pounds. So for her to gain weight in this case, it actually did make her look better. So this is why, again, you gotta be looking at what's happening with the scale relative to what you're seeing in your photos. Okay, so those are two client examples of going through a reverse diet. And as you can see, in both cases, they ended up eating more, but got a better body composition, got leaner, got more defined. So now the next phase for most people, and unless you are very petite, is going to be to do a cut, to do a fat loss phase. So essentially, this is going to be where you do start to drop calories once you've maxed out your reverse diet. How do you know you've maxed out your reverse diet? Well, it's gonna be really one of two ways. It's either gonna be that you just get to a point where you're feeling like it's too much food, you feel really quite full, quite stuffed, but you still have more body fat to lose. That's when you would know you can start moving the direction of dropping your calories. The other reason would be, let's say you were losing weight in your reverse in the beginning, but now you've stopped losing weight and now you're kind of maintaining weight or maybe you're even starting to gain. That's definitely how you know it's also time to start moving in the direction of the deficit. So let me share two client examples of this very quickly. So the first is my client Valerie, who is down 40 pounds at 48 years old and maintaining it with ease while eating over 2000 calories a day. So she was another client who came to me, obviously overweight, obviously had body fat that she wanted to lose, but we also found that she was only averaging about 1500 calories a day. I don't know what it is about this number, but I find most women are eating like 15, 16, 17. This is kind of the normal amount of food I see a lot of women eating when they're not really trying to eat to be fit. So since she was only eating 1500, but obviously had fat to lose, what did we do? We did a reverse diet first. So we went all the way from 1500 up to 2300 calories a day. And in this time, Valerie did lose about 13 pounds. So that was amazing. It was a perfect indication that her metabolism was picking up and that her body was really happy. That's why she was losing weight, eating more. However, by the time we got to about 2300 calories a day, this is when I started to notice that her weight loss was stalling. She wasn't losing anymore. So that's when I realized, okay, it's totally fine for us to move into a cut now to start dropping calories to continue more fat loss because our calories are definitely high enough and she's not continuing to lose anymore. So we might as well start dropping them. So then we did a cut for about seven months and most of the time she was eating around 2000 calories a day. But by the end, the absolute lowest that we went was 1700 calories. And this is when she lost about another 27 pounds for a total of 40 pounds down in just about one year. And then what we did was actually a reverse diet out of the cut so that she could maintain those results. So we once again ate all the way back up to around 2100, 2200 calories a day and she was able to maintain all the weight that she lost. So that's also when you will implement a reverse diet is to get out of your cut and be able to maintain the results. And again, this is just the magic of getting your body adapted to higher calories and making your metabolism faster and having the fuel to build muscle. Okay, and the last phase is a build. So what should you expect in a build? How will you know it's time to go into one and how will you know it's time to end one? Well, the only people who can go into a build, meaning a calorie surplus to actually gain weight and put a lot of muscle on are people obviously who have the 
room to do so. So if you're somebody who has quite a lot of body fat to lose, then obviously you're not going to be ready for a build. You're going to need to reverse cut and you might need to cycle through a few phases of that before you lose all the weight that you have to lose. And once you get to a point that you're lean enough that you have room to gain about 10 to 15 pounds, that is when you can move into a build. So all my clients that go into builds are either clients who are coming in who are already quite skinny or sort of skinny fat, or they started off more overweight and we've gotten them leaned out. So I'm gonna share one client example here. This is my client Summer. And obviously you can see she was quite petite, you know, maybe slightly skinny fat. She didn't have as much toned, sexy shape as she would like. So what do we do? We first did a reverse that turned into a build and we actually just finished a cut and now we're moving again into the reverse build for her. So when she came into the program, she was averaging about 1800 calories a day and we spent nearly a year doing a reverse initially and then eventually it turned into a build and the way that you'll know that it turns into a build is when you start to actually consistently gain weight that's when you know you're now in the surplus because you're consistently gaining so when she first came into the program she was weighing about 151 pounds and in the beginning of our reverse she actually lost about five six pounds in the very beginning but as we started to increase and go into the build she started to gain weight again although she was looking much better because she was putting on a lot of muscle while taking fat off so we went all the way up to 155 pounds meaning she gained about 10 pounds from the weight she lost in the reverse all the way to finishing a build. And again, this was about one year. She did have to take about two or three months off of coaching. So it was maybe more like nine to 10 months of building. And then from there, she did look really, really good, but we decided, okay, now let's do a cut to just take off the little bit of fluff that you may have gained while building and reveal this really sexy, really defined body underneath. So we just finished a cut for about close to six months. And obviously she didn't have a whole lot of weight to lose, but we did end up taking off eight pounds and she just looked really lean, really toned, really defined, super amazing. And because we had gotten our calories so high, we'd gotten all the way up to 2,700 calories a day. We had lots of room to drop her intake for this deficit. So by the end, we had gone down to 1,700, meaning we literally dropped a thousand calories in the space of about six months. So that is also why you want to build your calories up first. So you're going to have a lot of room to work with and be able to kind of push your body to a bit of an extreme to get the result that you want. All right, fam. So now you can see examples of how we were able to actually analyze the data of our clients and to know whether or not we were making the right decisions and whether or not we had to change protocol. So you need to be doing this too. Please do not waste your time and energy, just hoping and guessing for results, spending all this time working out all this time eating healthy, but then having no idea what your numbers are and if or how your body is changing. If you want to have your hands held through this whole process, be guided top to bottom on exactly how to get results just like our amazing clients, then click on the link in the description and come check out our coaching program. You can set up a free consult call. We would love to meet with you and see if you would be a good fit to transform your body once and for all so you can finally have the fitness results you've always dreamed of. All right, fam, thank you so much for checking out this video. Now I want you to go watch this one here where I'm gonna walk you through the details of how to do a fat loss phase, exactly when and how to add in the cardio, the steps, when and how to drop your calories. So I will see you in that video.